Hi friends, this is chapter number 10 and the topic is chemical properties of bases. So what are the learning objectives in this lecture? At the end of the lecture, you should know that how acids going to react with bases. How bases reacts with ammonium salts and what is the precipitation of hydroxides. So let's start. So reaction of acids with bases. Now how bases reacts with acids? Whenever bases reacts with acids, neutralization reaction takes place. Do you know what is neutralization reaction? The word neutralization means to get neutral. Now how acids and bases get neutral? It means that they neither be more acidic and nor be more basic. So it can be a salt. Whenever acid and base react together, they will give salt and water. This is the basic neutralization reaction. Here I am taking potassium hydroxide as a base. Now why it is a base? Because of hydroxide ion. The two ions are joining together. One is cation and the other is anion. To give us a stable molecule or stable base. Potassium positive and hydroxide negative. They will break apart and react with acid. So this is basically simple and ion exchange method in which base is breaking and acid is also breaking apart and the opposite ions will combine together to give us a new product which will be a salt. So here potassium positive will react with SO4 negative sulfate ion and in the result we will get a salt K2SO4. Now don't you think from where this 2 comes? The 2 which is present in subscript with potassium. This 2 comes because of cross valences. We know that potassium belongs to group number 1. While sulfate ion has a charge of negative 2. So when these charges will gonna cross, the 2 of sulfate will come below potassium and has potassium as a charge of only positive 1. So it's not important to write 1 below sulphate. So it will gonna be K2SO4. In this way acid and base react together to give us salt. While in the reactants we have OH negative as well as H positive. So they both will satisfy each other and form water. So in this way acids and bases react together to give us salt and water. A simple neutralization reaction. So students before starting this you should know that what are salts. Any compounds which contains chlorates phosphates, sulfates at the end of their compounds are known as salts. Like in these equations NH4Cl. So in NH4Cl now here NH4 is combined with chlorine. So it's a salt and this salt is slightly acidic in nature. Because how it formed, ammonia wrecked with a strong hydrochloric acid to give us this ammonium salt, ammonium chloride. Most of the times, ammonium chlorides or ammonium salts going to react with strong bases. So here, ammonium chloride is reacting with NaOH a water soluble base 
and we know that all those bases which are soluble in water are known as alkalis. So, can I say that all alkalis are bases, but all bases are not alkalis. So, here ammonium chloride is reacting with the base sodium hydroxide and how this reaction is taking place? It is an ion exchange method again and NH4 positive of salt ammonium salt will combine with hydroxide ion of a base. So, it will give us NH4OH and if we break apart this compound further it will able to give us ammonia gas and water. So, whenever we have ammonium salts we will definitely get ammonia gas in the product. So, the side products will be ammonia gas and water and what is the major product? It will be NaCl. Sodium positive of base combined with chloride negative of ammonium salt and in the result NaCl will formed. So, in this way ammonium salts react with bases. In the second equation NH4 twice SO4 going to react with calcium hydroxide. Now, here again calcium positive reacts with sulphate negative. So, in result we will get calcium sulphate CaSO4 and the rest of the compounds will join together to give us ammonia gas and water. So, this is very simple and basic reaction of ammonium salts with bases. So, before starting precipitation of hydroxides, you should know what is precipitation. Solid particles formed over the solution are known as precipitants. And why precipitation takes place? There are so many reasons, but some of the very basic reasons are precipitation mostly occurs if concentration of one compound is above the solubility limit. Means we are mixing two things and the one thing is much more in amount than as compared to the other. So, definitely it will not gonna properly or completely soluble in it and it will precipitate out. And the second reason is that I am using a compound which is not completely soluble in another compound. So, it will also able to form precipitates. So, here why we use precipitation of hydroxides? We use precipitation of hydroxides because to find out the heavy metals which we are using in our solutions. For example, I am reacting a heavy metal salt with a base and that heavy metal salt is unknown to me. So, after reaction I will get the precipitates and the color of precipitates will going to tell me about the heavy metal which is used or the unknown heavy metal which is used in the reaction. So, here I am using heavy metal salts. I have told you before that any compound which contains sulphates and chlorates at the end of the molecules are salts. Copper sulphate, now copper is in heavy metal and sulphate is representing the salt is reacting with bases. The positive ion of one compound will going to react with the negative ion of another compound. So, in the result I will get CuOH twice and sodium sulphate. Now, this copper hydroxide is a precipitate. As copper is in heavy metal, so it will gonna precipitate out it will come over the solution in a solid form 
and the color of precipitates will going to tell me that which type of an heavy metal I am using. Now here copper precipitates will blue in color. So for your convenience I have written blue precipitates in blue in color. So we'll, you will able to learn it easily. Now in the second reaction zinc chloride is reacting with base sodium hydroxide. Now in sodium hydroxide zinc is a heavy metal and it will react with OH negative to give zinc hydroxide and in the product NaCl formation will take place which is a common salt. The white precipitates of zinc hydroxide will shows that zinc chloride is used in the reaction or in the reactant. So in this way these white precipitants can be used to judge zinc. Now iron will give brown precipitates and lead will give white precipitates. And how they react? Iron chloride will going to react with the base NaOH in this case iron positive going to react with hydroxide negative of a base to give brown precipitates of iron hydroxide and sodium chloride will form in other product. Similarly lead nitrate will going to react with the base and lead is in heavy metal. When it reacts with base white precipitates of lead hydroxide will form and the salt formation will be NaNO3. So in this way precipitation of hydroxides will going to occur. Now in these reactions calcium and iron salts are used to react with bases. And the color of precipitates will gonna judge that which heavy metals we have used in the reactants. Here I am using calcium chloride with sodium hydroxide. Now calcium as a cation going to react with the anion of base which is OH negative and in the result we will get white precipitates of calcium hydroxide while the other product is sodium chloride. In the second reaction iron sulphate is reacting with base. Iron as a cation going to react with hydroxide anion of a base and they both react together to give us FeOH twice which is dirty green in color. The precipitates of iron oxide, iron hydroxides are dirty green in color. So this dirty green color will tell us that we have used iron in the reactants. While sodium positive and SO4 negative will join together to give us Na2SO4 which is a salt. So I hope this topic is now much clear to you. Thank you so much.